Welcome back everyone to me, Jenny Garrett, taking you through your Happinista 2021 journal. So we're here now at the Wheel of Life page, um, and you may have come across uh, something like this previously. Um, the balance wheel is a place where you plot where you feel you are now, um, and also where you want to be. <clears throat> So I just want to share with you these words, connect, inspire, support and enable. And just uh, remind you that that's the sort of theme that goes through the journal. So we have here connect, enable, support and inspire. So you have the words going through and those various areas. So there are eight sec sessions in this Wheel of Life. Um, and they're one way of representing your life. Of course, you might have other sections. You might want to rename a section. You're you know, more than free to do so if you want to. And you mark how you feel at the moment on each segment by drawing a line to create a new outer edge. So for example, uh, this will add up. This will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I feel that my health is currently around a five, I'll go in one, two, three, four, five, and I'll draw a line here. If I feel my self-care is at a seven, then I'll draw a line here. If I feel that my finances are a one, I'll draw a line here. And so you end up with these lines that you've drawn uh, that sort of create a new kind of uh, uneven circle, okay? Um, and you know, one is low, 10 is high. So that new perimeter of the circle represents your current balance. Um, and then you use another color and show how you want to feel. Now, what I want to explain to you is, this is about your level of satisfaction in the area. So I might be satisfied with my health, um, you know, I might be at a 10 in my health. That doesn't mean I'm the healthiest person in the world. It's about my level of satisfaction. Um, I might be satisfied with my family and friends, but I may only have one friend and that, that's okay because it's about my level of satisfaction. So this isn't about comparing yourself to anyone else. This isn't about looking at anyone else's measurement or anything like that. And it's also about where you need need and want to focus. You know, I could have a lot less money than other people, but I might be really happy with my finances right now, but I might not be happy with my learning. I might think, well, actually, um, you know, I might already have a doctorate, but I might think I've still got a lot to learn and I want to spend time learning this year. Maybe I'm starting a new job. Maybe I'm looking for new interests. Uh, maybe I've re recently retired. So many different things. And learning, might I might not be satisfied with my level of learning. And that might be an area that I want to increase. So, you know, when you complete your circle, first of all, it's what's my level of satisfaction in these areas? And then what the level of satisfaction I want to have is, because even though your level of satisfaction might be low, you might be, mm, I'm not that happy with my finances, but you know what, I don't really want to do anything about it. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy, I'm quite high on my habits, but I do want to work on my habits. Yeah. So um, it's not just about comparing yourself to others or thinking about uh, how other people seem. It's what's my personal level of satisfaction? What would I like my level of satisfaction to be? And then what steps do I want to take to uh, improve in the areas that matter to me? When you draw that first circle, that first, uh, the lines you draw up, the outer perimeter, that tells you something straight away about your current picture. And then when you draw the second circle about where you'd like to be in terms of your satisfaction, then that again gives you another picture because you see the difference between where you are and where you want to be. And then you can choose where to focus. You know, it can be overwhelming to look at these things and think, oh my goodness, I've got to focus on my learning, my habits, my health, my self-care, my finance, my life planning, my family, my friends. You know, the idea is that you don't focus on all areas. You choose two or three to focus on uh, at different points in the year and don't overwhelm yourself um, because otherwise you try and, you know, a bit like a headless chicken, you're trying to go into every direction and you achieve very little. Yeah. But again, <clears throat> when you're doing it, you might say, gosh, my support is the area that really I need to work on or my inspiration or my connections. 
or things that enable me to move forward. So there might be a little theme that comes through. And as you do it, you might go back and you might think, oh yeah, you know, these are the bullets that I most need to work on. It's around support. So I'm gonna really look at the bullets that relate to that or around my connections, I need to think more about that. So it might help you when you're thinking about the bullets that you most want to focus on. And of course you can create your own bullets, as I said earlier. So then you have your sort of vision stroke mission for uh, 21. Uh, this starts to help you start to vision. Um, and for those of you who have uh, been part of my courses or my uh, talks before, you'll know that vision is a big thing for me. Actually having a vision for your future and actually visualizing it in glorious technicolor. So actually what other... Uh, you know, what does it look like? What am I wearing? What am I doing? <clears throat> what are people saying? What does it taste, feel, smell like? You know, what is it? What do I see? What do I hear? You know, visualizing it in rich Technicolor. So the questions here are, what are your dreams and wishes for 2021? And think big, think huge, audacious, hairy goals, you know, go big or go home. Think about the biggest dreams that you can possibly think of. Don't worry if you have no idea how to make it happen. That's not the issue. Um, you know, I just had a client that I've been coaching. She's been living in another country during lockdown. She was thinking, I don't want to leave this country, but her company was asking her to. She, within a matter of weeks, has found an amazing job where she can be based in the country where she wants to be. She didn't know how to make it happen. She visualized it, she dreamt about it, she thought big and it's occurred. And this happens all the time. You know, we're looking for the answers. Sometimes the answers start with a big dream. So, you know, don't worry about how you make it happen. Just start writing your hopes, your wants, your needs down and get excited about them. Get really excited, get the butterflies in the tummy. Imagine it's already happened. And, and believe me, it makes a difference. Um, you know, if it's about connecting, think about how you'll build your network, your family, your friends. How can you prioritize the important people in your life? And if 2020 has taught us anything, uh, it's about people, isn't it? We've realized how important people are for us. Also, this idea of inspiring. I talk a lot about these things, you know, the learning, the habits, developing good habits, good mindset, going to courses, conference, retreats, podcasts, books. Yeah, finding information that inspires you, <clears throat> that makes you um, want more, you know, to, that fills you up and um, pushes you beyond where you are currently. So uh, do start to think about those things as well. Uh, and also what enables you? What do you need to, to get there? So do you need to do some life planning? Do you need to focus on getting your debts down or building up some savings? Is it contacts that you need to reignite? or sales that you need to have, or a new business, um, or a new job, or a promotion that you need to get in order to get you where you want to be. And also in that support section, you know, how can you work on your mindset, your health, your holidays, even if they are staycations, and also your self-care. And those of you who've been on our retreats, that self-care is a big part of being able to take yourself forward because it gives you some time out to refresh, replenish, and also to set those goals, to have the space to think about what you really want. And also a commitment to yourself. You can see at the bottom of the page, by the 31st of December, 2021, I will. And you can go back to that page and look at it at the end of the year and think, did I do it? Did I achieve what I set out for myself? Did I achieve something even better than I could have imagined? Yeah. Um, what will I what will I have done? So think about that. Um, think about what it is you want. I'm looking at mine from the previous uh, previous year and I've been able to do two out of three of them, two out of three. I, uh, things I said that I would achieve by the end of 2020, I have done. Um, I've got a few days left, um, 15 days to maybe achieve the last one. So it is completely possible. Uh, we'll see if I do it or not. The thing is, sometimes your priorities change as well. And, uh, uh, and that's okay too. But if you don't set the goal in the first place, you can't get there. 
So moving on to the next two pages in your journal. And this is your word for 2021. This was hugely powerful for me, powerful for me, and I think for others last year. You just choose one word that you focus on every day. And that word can sum up for you who you want to be, how you want to live, or what you want to do. And if you let it, your one world will shape not only your year, it can shape you. It definitely, uh, I used to think about it in the shower every day. I still do. I uh, named my car it, I got a new car. So I named my car it. I used it as my password for some, for some things as well um, with some other letters and numbers around it. Um, and so I, I built it into my life and it became very apparent that it was real for me. Um, it, became, it came to life. So do be careful which word you choose because it can take a, on a life of its own. And there's more than one word meaning to words, aren't there? There are different perspectives on a word. So do think about that. Yeah, you know, if I, you know, do I want this? What do I mean when I'm thinking about this word? How do I want it to manifest for, for me? You know, you can make it a screensaver in your phone. Uh, you can use it in so many ways. And also you can find quotes and images or hashtags that use the same thing on Instagram. I did that also. Or you might search for books and blogs which support it. And I read books on, on, my, on my word as well. So there's so many ways in which you can really bring the word to life. Um, and I actually wrote it in my journal and then I drew flowers around it as well last year. And I'm looking at it now in my, in my old journal and, and it just worked for me. And I I'm actually don't want to let go of last year's words. So I don't know if I'm gonna just continue with it because it worked for me so well, but I'm gonna sit with it and think, is there another word that I need to have this year? And then there's your secret wish. You know, there's some things that you want, but you're kind of embarrassed to admit, or you think, oh, it sounds too much, or it sounds too big, or who am I to dream these big dreams? And who am I to want this? Um, this is where you put it, yeah, your secret wish. What do you really, really want? Not being realistic and logical and thinking, oh, you know, I've got to think about all of my other responsibilities. And what's your secret wish? Unleash what you're really wanting, needing, planning or thinking. Um, yeah, and I think again, I'm looking at mine and, uh, and, I, and I think uh, it pretty much happened last year as well. So I'm pretty pleased when I'm looking back and I'm so excited for you to be looking back at the end of 2021 to be excited and pleased too. And also, is there a mantra that you want to live by in 2021? Um, there's two mantras that I kind of have, they're kind of mantra stroke affirmations that I love. And if you, you can search for mantras and affirmations on the internet, if you can't think of one yourself. Um, I love the quote, no one is you, and that is your power. And that is a kind of mantra of mine. Um, and the other one is an affirmation that I found many years ago, in the infinity of life where you are, all is well in your world. And I really like that, all is well. As soon as you know, that calms you down, takes away any anxiety, uh, makes you feel good. So that's that left-hand page. And on the right-hand page, it's uh, things you will. And again, it's just different perspectives on your life. Well, what I will become, what I will receive, what I will believe, what I will connect with. Um, where I'll travel to. And that's an interesting one, isn't it? Well, you can still travel even though you're online, uh, if that's what it ends up being. Things I will attend, um, things I will attract, celebrate, try, things I will give up, yeah? Things I will do more of, things I will learn, um, things I will simplify, what I will I organize and what will I create? Um, yeah, and again, a lot of these things, it seems that I did. The traveling, I traveled to the places I wanted to travel to, even though it was online, but I did visit people in all of those places, which I'm quite excited about. Um, yeah, so I, I feel that 
I, the things I put into here, um, I did. And what I did was I used different colored pens. So I used different colored felt tip pens. Uh, and I don't know about you, color just brings things to life for me. It's really interesting. I'm not sure if there was a color code because um, the reconnect with, I put in orange and then I put lots of things in pink and purple, but for some reason, the reconnect uh, with was in another color. So maybe that was the most important thing to me. Um, and, I, and I think I've been able to do it. So this is a really nice page. You know, use your gut here, tap into your instincts. <clears throat> Excuse me, tap into your instincts here. You don't have to think, overthink this, what flows from you? What flows through you? I, as I said before, if you think, oh, I don't wanna write in this journal and get it wrong and then I have to change it, then you can use post-it notes in the beginning and then go in and write over it. But what I suggest, um, yeah, what I suggest to you is, even if you do write in post-it notes, do go back in and then write it in permanently. There's something about something being permanent that you can't get away from it. You can't hide it. You can't change your mind. It really shows your commitment. So I hope that's useful for you to share these four pages. Um, and I'm going to stop now and I'll go on to another video. Uh, for the next part of the journal. See you shortly.